We're on senior Donovan High School in Toms River, New Jersey, connecting faith and life. And you're watching Real Faith TV. <laughs> We're all made in the image and likeness of God, and when we look in the media and watch TV shows and we see those perfect models with the gorgeous tans, we feel worthless because we don't look like that. Yeah, you know, you have to be perfect. You um, have to expose yourself more. You have to be just so fine-tuned with everything. It isn't always easy to recognize our value because there are so many stereotypes put on everybody. Like girls have to be skinny and boys have to be the perfect gentleman. When if we were all being ourselves, everything would just work out anyway. I think a lot of people have a hard time recognizing their own value because of the kind of idea that everyone needs to be perfect and that there's constantly people telling us that we're not good enough, we're not smart enough, we're not pretty enough. But if you think about it, God made us all to do something specific. We all have our own purpose. And everybody touches somebody else's life in some way. We're all puzzle pieces, and without one piece, we can't make the whole picture. So we all have something that makes us special. We might not know it yet, we'll figure it out. That's what life's about, we'll figure out what makes us special. Everything we have is because of God, and, is be and that everything we have is because He loves us so much. And we have to sometimes stop and think and just thank Him for all that. Every single person is unique, no matter who they are, no matter... Everyone's important to someone. I have a friend that didn't really know his value, and he used to cut himself. He cut himself for three years, and I got him to stop. I didn't like the fact that he wasn't respecting his body, and I think he, that he should because God loves each and every one of us, and He gave us these bodies, and you only get one of them, and he can't be replaced, and he knows that now. He's doing better now. It's a journey. You have to get through it, and he's, he's doing okay now. It's a great thing to feel like we're unique, that we have gifts and qualities that set us apart. And it's great that today's culture seems to celebrate the things that make us different. But sometimes we can feel alone in our uniqueness, to the point of questioning our self-worth. Maybe it's because all of the celebrities we see on TV and in magazines seem to look so perfect and seem to have the same sort of image. At some point or another, we might have felt like our lives made very little difference to others or the rest of the world. Well, you know, Ella, as Catholics, we believe that we are created and loved by God. This may be something we've been hearing since first grade, but when you really stop and think about it, it's a big deal. Knowing your worth, you cannot be replaced. That's what we'll be talking about today. Hi everyone, I'm Nick. And I'm Ella. And, and this, this is, is Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. First, we'd like to thank the Monsignor Donovan High School students from Toms River, New Jersey for helping us open today's show. And for sharing their thoughts about why it's difficult sometimes for us to recognize our own individual value and worth. We'll meet a few other Monsignor Donovan students throughout the show as our wild card guests. But now, let's meet our spotlight guest, Emily, who wants everyone to realize that they cannot be replaced. Emily co-founded the organization, You Cannot Be Replaced, to help get this vital message out that we are each unique and irreplaceable. She was moved to create this organization, an innovative awareness campaign, in response to a number of tragic suicides among young people in her school and community. She sounds awesome, Ella. Let's hear what she has to say. I believe that everyone is unique because I feel like God put us on this earth for a purpose, that he created us with so many different gifts and talents that it makes each and every one of us unique in a different way. Just growing up with, in a family of eight and having, you know, babies and life all around me and stuff, and then going through the tragedies in high school, it made me realize the importance of life and how we're supposed to just treasure like everyone and that uh, 
everyone is just irreplaceable. If someone asked me why they were irreplaceable, I would tell them that God put them on this earth for a specific reason, that you are the only one, the only you, that if you look at even your fingerprint, you know, why does everyone have their own different thumbprint? It's because you are the only you. You have certain gifts, certain talents, a personality even, that no one else has. And I feel like everyone's affects a different person in a certain way. So if you take that one talent, that one special thing that you have, and you can inspire someone else to find their one talent, or it's just a chain of reaction. I think that if someone is in a dark place and feeling alone and sad and not really knowing what to do, that they should definitely open up to someone, even if it's a friend, a parent, a teacher, anyone to talk to, to communicate with someone. I know that when I was a sophomore and I was feeling alone and in a dark place that to talk to my parents or to, to open up to them, to tell them how I was feeling definitely made me feel better. You know, what she said about how the fingerprints are all different, it reminds me of how like every snowflake is different. You learn that when you're younger. Right. And it's just like, if God puts so much energy into making every snowflake different, you can be sure that your gifts are so unique compared right. to everyone else's. And we are unique. Like each of us has a specific assignment and you know, it's the way we carry it out. You know, we have to fulfill that assignment. And I just think that's so important that we are all different and we're all unique. So, well. Ella, let's see what our studio guests have to say about this topic. Okay, they are Monique, Lexi, Desiree, Joe, Allie, Mike, and Drew. Before we have you answer our first question, let's hear from a wild card guest. Her name's Joanne from Mount Senior Donovan High School. Joanne is also an RFTV cast member. Here she shares an analogy about a band to help us understand how important and unique each one of us is. I just joined the band here at Monsignor Donovan, and I never realized how important every instrument was until I met the drum section. We have 10 drummers in our section in the band, and each one of them plays the same drum. So you think, without one of them, the band will still sound the same. And that's what everyone thought until our lead drummer had enough and quit the band. The whole band fell on its face. She didn't think she was important to the band because people were making fun of her. When you think of drummers, you normally think of boys. And she was a girl. Lots of people made fun of her for that and called her names. It got to her after a while. When she quit and she saw what happened, she realized that how important one person can be and that you take the drums away from the band and the whole band loses its beat. No song is the same. That goes for anything. Any instrument, you take it away from the band and this music will never sound the same. She realized how important she was to the band and we all realized how special she was. Um, we're so glad she came back for the concert. I like how Joanne compared like even just one drummer being out of the band made the whole song sound different. And I think she used the analogy to compare it to us. Even missing just one person out of the whole community can make such a big difference. So in a world as big and complex as ours, is it always easy to recognize that we cannot be replaced? Well, I feel the biggest problem is everyone wants to be like someone else. Everyone wants to conform. And when you, when you try to conform, you start like dropping away all those gifts that make you so unique. And when you start doing that, that's when you feel like you can be replaced easily. I think that it's like really hard because since there's so many people, it's like why would God just love like me as much as everyone else? Sometimes I feel like maybe God loves someone else more than just like me, than he loves me. I totally agree with what you said, Joe. I think it's hard to recognize our self-worth when we live in a society that tells us to conform to specific characteristics. I work in the entertainment industry, and I know that being in that industry, as well as being in athletics, it's hard to recognize your self-worth when they're constantly saying that you're expendable, that we can find better talent than you. Yeah, I agree with what you said, because there's a show I watch, it's called Dance Moms, and the dance teacher is always just like telling her students, like, you are replaceable, you know, there are people out there who want this position, and you can be replaced, and it's like, well, why would you say that to a nine-year-old? Because they're looking for, you know, someone to look up to, looking for someone to tell them that they're doing a good job. So it's like, 
in society today, like the world just thinks the opposite. Like you may feel like you're doing a good job, but the other people out there, like you're not good enough. But no one thinks that it's easy? Well, when I think of my life at home, I think that it's really easy to understand my place. Because like in, in my house, when we all have work, we all have our job that we have to do. And if it doesn't if get done, like if someone goes away for a while, everyone else has to like chip in more. So you really see where you have your place and your work. And it's, I find it easy to understand that I'm important in my structure of my home and how things get done. So they need me. According to the church's document, Gaudium et Spes, man is the only creature on earth that God has willed for its own sake. Think about it. God willed you to exist. He didn't just see you and decide that he might as well keep you around. In his wisdom, he created you as you and desires that you be with him. In the youth catechism book, UCAT, we read that God looks at every person and loves him as though he were the only creature in the world. Isn't that how we all should be looked at? Yet, this isn't always a picture that society paints for us. Our culture can make it seem like in order to be worth something, we need to have the best clothes, the best body, the best social skills. Was there ever a time in your life when you didn't value your worth and you wanted to give up? That's how our next wild card guest, Sean, felt. He was a drummer in the band and was going to quit. Until someone helped him to believe in himself. I'm in the band and for our spring concert, we, I finally got the opportunity to be on the full drum set. And I was so excited, so excited. Kept trying to learn my part, learn my part. And two weeks before the concert, I didn't think I knew it well enough. And I just, I was gonna quit. And this girl, she's a senior, and also one of the best drummers I've ever met, came up to me and we started talking about it. And as we talked, she convinced me that even though, even though I might not feel prepared, she will help me out. And she wound up teaching me tricks to do with the part and easier ways to play it. I started to pray about it and I realized that as I was praying and her words kept coming back to my mind that I could do it. And I wound up nailing the part and it was one of the greatest parts of the show. Have you guys ever felt worthless like Sean said he was? And if you did, how did you overcome that feeling? I mean, I'm involved in the musical at school, so, um, you know, I, I try out, like, every spring or whatever. You know, sometimes I don't get the part, and I do start feeling worthless, but, I mean, then I, then I like, teach myself to just try harder, just to persevere more, and it builds me up more. I love singing a lot, and, you know, as a little kid, you always have those big dreams of, you know, being a big star, being famous. I always felt worthless because, I felt if I couldn't reach that fame goal, that none of my stuff mattered. And like, I never told anyone that I liked singing and I kept it to myself. I feel like now that people know and I, re reality has set in that I don't want to go for a famous position, music just means more to me. Yeah, I agree with Joseph. Like, I'm in plays too and like, when I don't get the part that I really want, I think like, oh, I'm so unsuccessful, but I don't really feel self worthless when it comes to that because I know I'm trying my best so. When I can't get something the first time and I continue to try and try and I can't quite get it, I begin to feel worthless. I begin to feel like, oh, I'm not worth the instructor's time or whoever it is that's trying to teach me. Just last week I tried water skiing for the first time and well. How was that? <laughs> it was uh, interesting. I fell a lot. <laughs> but. I persevered, I kept getting back up, I kept uh, trying again, so. That's what matters. Oh my gosh, I've tried out for the play every year at my school. Three years in a row, didn't make it, and I'm just like, man, I thought I was as good as her, or, but you can't compare yourself like that. And because I didn't make the play, I ended up joining the Federal Reserve Challenge Team. Not my thing, really, but I like I learned a lot, and I was actually valued on that team. I went and competed with them in New York, and like I was like, if I made it in the play, I wouldn't have time for that. While in high school, our spotlight guest Emily had to deal with the devastation of teen suicide. Six of her fellow students took their lives, sending shockwaves throughout the community. These tragic deaths impacted Emily at a young age. Let's hear what she has to say. Freshman year was when the first boy committed suicide and that definitely 
affected me. I didn't know him personally, but I knew of him. He was, you know, the popular soccer player, senior. So to hear that someone took their own life, I was very confused. I was only 14 at the time. It was life-changing. So that definitely made me reevaluate my decisions in life and what I was doing and who the friends I was hanging out with. And then senior year, we almost lost my brother. He was out at a party. He decided that he was going to drink and he took around 17 shots in a half hour. So I got a call from his friend and just seeing him, I knew automatically that I had to call my parents. He was unconscious when I picked him up. He was pale, he couldn't keep his head up. I saved his life with not only me, but his friends also who made the decision that they needed to call me too. And the next day, the doctor said, you know, if she didn't call at that time, or if she called any later, we would have lost him. To think that I almost lost my brother, my, you know, my best friend, it was just an eye opener. Almost losing someone, but knowing that I still have him is unbelievable. And, you know, there's no one else like him. St. John Paul II wrote, the human being is always unique and unrepeatable. Somebody thought of and chosen from eternity, called and identified by his own name. God loves us because we are his. Not because of what we do or can't do, not because of what we look like. Or because we're rich or we're poor. He loves us just as we are. He loves us totally and completely without conditions. And there is no one like you or me in the world. We are not replaceable. Each one of us is a gift to the world and a gift to each other. Let's go back to Emily, where she discusses how she has made a gift of herself. In the important work she is doing to help young people through her organization, you cannot be replaced. I was out of high school. I was a freshman at Cabrini College, and I got a call from my mom. And she told me that another one happened. So I came home that weekend and I couldn't get the feeling out of my system that I had to do something. So to bouncing off ideas from me and my parents of a simple wristband that says I cannot be replaced on it, to think that over a year that we've passed out 12,000 wristbands and that it's affected people's lives is just incredible. Our purpose as You Cannot Be Replaced is to remind them with wristbands and daily affirmations that you know you can't be replaced. The events that prompted me to found this organization with my parents was definitely the tragedies during high school. Having a total of 12 suicides in our community definitely struck everyone. So to be able to help other people by passing wristbands or just talking to them and reminding them that they're just irreplaceable. What are some of your gifts and talents? And how do you use them to help others? Well, the talent I have is I love to sing and I always sing all the time. So I think a gift that comes with that talent is joy. So when I do sing, I think a lot, I always see people with smiles on their face. That also brings me joy too. One of my gifts and talents is like, like, I can, like, make people happy and, like, make myself happy, even if I'm not. And, like, the same thing about joy. Like, I, like, love, like, giving, like, people joy, like, from just making them happy. Well, how do you give them joy? Like, by just, like, I don't know, like, complimenting them. <laughs> I've been told that I'm a really good listener, so that's a gift that I have that I find it pretty easy to share because a lot of people just need someone to listen to them a lot of the time and get their thoughts out and get their thoughts straight. So that's what I do to help others. Well, in contrast, I enjoy being a speaker, I enjoy talking, and I enjoy public speaking, and I enjoy being on camera and doing things like this, so this is one way that I could definitely help someone else out. Maybe we wish that we had better hair or that we were better at sports or music. But really, our only true flaws are our sins. But even they don't keep God from loving us. He paid the ultimate price by dying for us so that our sins could be forgiven. No matter what we have done, we can always turn back to God. This is what makes the sacrament of reconciliation such a gift. By going to confession, we acknowledge that we deserve more than the fleeting satisfaction we get from sin. God affirms our dignity by washing away our sins and giving us a chance to start over. We will always struggle with imperfections, but what matters is that we turn to God for help and ask Him to help us see how priceless we are. Next, Sam, another wild card guest from Monsignor Donovan High School, shares about a friend who she helped to understand her worth. I can understand how people don't know their self-worth 
when they're in a lot of pain. I had a friend who self-harmed after she went through so much stuff and she just thought that that was the end and that's all she could do. But after her parents found out and a friend talked to her about it, she realized that she didn't even know why she was doing this. She was letting out her pain by giving her more pain. But with the help of friends and family and even God, I know that sounds really like religious and all that, God actually helped this person so much and she told me that she prayed every night and God got her through this. Even when you think that you're alone, God is always with you and no matter how religious that sounds and you think that it's just like something that people say, it's honestly really true. What about you guys? How is God working through you to help others recognize their own dignity and self-worth? I post my work online and one of the biggest compliments I get is that Wow, you're really, your work really shows how people feel. I can really relate. And the thing that definitely helps people to recognize that they're not going through their situation alone, that there are other people going through the same thing, and definitely helps them uh, with their own situation. I agree with you. Um, I also enjoy writing, and I also post mine online as well. Um, I feel like I like to read quotes a lot. I'm very big into quotes and inspirational sayings. So whenever I'm going to write something, I always try and incorporate a quote that I just read or a quote that I came up with. Writing for me helps me express my feelings if I'm upset about something. And I feel like when I'm expressing what I'm upset about, if I show someone else, they might be experiencing the same thing and it could help them through. As fellow human beings, we have the responsibility to build each other up and to help others see their worth. We should offer affirmations to our friends and help them to make good decisions, like staying away from drugs, alcohol, and unhealthy relationships. But not just to our friends. We need to be on the lookout for all who might be in need of a friend, so they benefit from our kindness, our friendliness, and our genuine interest in their lives. Next, Emily describes how her organization, the wristbands and assemblies, has reached thousands of young people. We're explaining young uh, adults, young teenagers to do is to wear the wristband as long as they need to be constantly reminded that they're irreplaceable. So every time they look down at their wrist, they see, I cannot be replaced, so it reminds them daily. And then um, you're supposed to pass the wristband on to someone with an affirmation. So when you see someone who is either having a really good day or a bad day, it doesn't matter, but you know, you'll know when you're supposed to pass it to remind that person that they're irreplaceable also. This one high school kid, a teacher gave him a wristband and told him to go and pass on the wristbands and he did and he came back and he was 10 times happier. There was this one lady who was older, I think around in her 50s, that she was cutting herself her whole life and she received a band from one of her friends and she emailed us and told us her story and she said once she got the wristband she put the knife down and she stopped cutting herself. My hope for this movement is to try to help other people to make them realize how unique and how irreplaceable they are even if it's just that one person in the audience realize wow I am irreplaceable I'm going to go do something for someone else whatever they're feeling at that point to know that God is always there through the bad the good that he loves us no matter what, that he loves us so much that he made us our own individual person. This is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to be helping even if they don't know me or they don't know the person. How can prayer help others with thoughts of self-worth, self suicide, or even self-harm? Um, prayer gives you ho hope and um, gives you hope. It gives you courage and therefore I think that um, just having that courage makes you feel like you're worth something. Yeah, like Joseph said, prayer gives you hope that tomorrow's gonna be better than today and the comfort that God's always there for you no matter what happens. Prayer was definitely a powerful tool for me in my life and un in understanding my self-worth. Um, at a young age, I was molested by someone who I trusted. So it was hard for me growing up with that idea that all I'm worth to him, to people, is my body. A friend just suggested, not even knowing anything about this, to pray. So um, he, what she said was to imagine God holding you. What I ended up picturing was um, God holding me in his hands like this, close to his heart, and I was really little, um, and I just fell asleep praying 
to him really personally. It wasn't like a Hail Mary or an Our Father. It was my first personal prayer to God. So through that, he helped me understand that I'm not just my body. I'm my soul. I'm worth more than what people want from me. He loves me, and that just made me feel incredibly important in life. Well, um, for me, I've gone through a lot, and I've experienced some things in my life. And at times, I just felt like God was doing this to me, and I didn't want to pray to Him. I didn't want to ask for His help because I felt like He was condemning me on purpose, or He was making my life hard. And I know that there are a lot of people out there that don't have a religion base, or did, and left it and dropped it, and they don't feel they can talk to God. And I know how they feel a lot of the time because, like, you just need, sometimes you can't turn to God if you don't trust Him. Yeah, I feel like saying that when you pray to God, it'll all be better. But in reality, I feel like a lot of people struggle with that because they're not ready to trust someone when their whole life has been falling apart. And that's why I think these bracelets are a really good idea. They sell them on the website. And, you know, like it's, it's not exactly religious connected if you look at it a certain way. And it's just reminding you that someone cares about you. You know, like you matter to someone. And I think this was a great way just to get people to really just reconsider things, you know. Despite the pressures that are placed on us and the many ways in which we may feel worthless, God offers us hope in His Son, Jesus. God who loves us enough to forgive our sins and destine us for eternal happiness is a God whom we can trust to be with us in the darkest times. What are some ways we can show others that they are valued and important, that they cannot be replaced? We'd love to hear from you. Contact us at realfaithtv.com. Or send us a tweet. And we'll leave you today with the scripture passage from Psalm 139. You formed me in my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. So never forget how wonderfully each of us is made. We are wonderful and irreplaceable. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Real, Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. God bless. For those dealing with the daily struggles of caring for a loved one, we hear you. That's why AARP created a community with experts and other caregivers to help us better care for ourselves and the ones we love.